Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of the entrance of the Theotokos into the temple. Dukhul walidat al-ilah ila al-haykal. And I want to tell you a little bit about the story of this feast. If you want a visual reference, the icon of the feast is on the northern wall up there on the right. You see Joachim and Anna bringing a three-year-old Mary to the temple and Zacharias, the prophet, the father of St. John the Baptist, taking her into the temple. So where does the story come from? Because it is not mentioned in the Bible. This is not a story that is in the Bible, right? It is in one of the earliest Christian books called the Proto-Evangelion of James or, or the Gospel of James, which is not a gospel canonical in our Bible when you open our Bible, but it doesn't mean that everything in it the church refused. The church accepted some things from, from various books from early on, one of them is this story of the entrance of the Theotokos into the temple. The story tells us that Joachim and Anna, her parents, took Mary when she was three years old to the temple in an act of dedication or consecration, like to the Lord, to, to dedicate her, their daughter to the Lord. And this was not something that was never done before. Some people did that. They would send their children to the temple and the children would be raised in the surrounding of the temple, being taught there, right, and serve in the temple. But there's something different that happened with Mary when this happened. Zacharias, the father of John, the, 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 the husband of Elizabeth, was inspired to take her to a place that she was not supposed to be no one to the holy of holies which if we make a parallel with the orthodox church which by the way keeps the structure of the jewish temple the holy of holies would be the altar inside so she stayed there for nine years it doesn't mean that she stayed in the holy of holies for nine years but she stayed in the surrounding of the temple Right, and she was raised there. And we know that angels came to her and tended to her. God sent her angels. What I want to speak about is a little bit what is the Holy of Holies? Shuhuwe Quds al Aqdas. We heard the epistle being read in Arabic. I will repeat part of it in English to explain a little bit. Saint Paul explains to us what is this Holy of Holies, and he is basically copying or saying what is in the Old Testament. He says, the second curtain, right, imagine, imagine the church, you enter, there's the first part, and then there's the first curtain, which is right now closed, and then you enter to the second part, which is all of us here right now, and then there's the second curtain, and then from the second curtain, you go to the third part. So the Bible says, the second curtain, behind the second curtain stood a tent, called the Holy of Holies. What did it have What did it have inside this Holy of Holies? The Bible says it had the golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant, Tabut al-Ahd, the Ark of the Covenant, on all sides covered with gold. Do you see the tabernacle inside there in the altar that is covered with, this is coated with, with gold? This resembles that. What did it contain inside the Ark of the Covenant? It tells us about three things. It contained a golden urn, wi'a min zahab, holding the manna. The manna is the food that God gave to the Jewish people, to the Israelites, when they were leaving Egypt towards the Promised Land. They were in the desert, they had no food. God gave them from the sky, from heaven, manna. This was preserved to remember and it earned God's work to his people. What else was there, St. Paul tells us? 
There was Aaron's rod, Asa Harun, Aaron, the brother of Moses. He had a rod, and they wanted to know which of the tribes is the priestly tribe, and they put the rod of each of them in a, a, a place without watering. So a rod, يعني العصا, يعني شجرة, or a branch of a tree, really, it, it, it is what it is, right? And overnight, without they were dry uh, branches or rods. Only the rod of Aaron blossomed. It blossomed, right? Greenery. It budded, the Bible says. And also, in the Ark of the Covenant, there were the tablets or the tables of the covenant. These are the tablets on which God wrote the Ten Commandments and gave them to Moses. If you look in the altar, what do you see? The New Covenant, the tablet on which the New Covenant is written, which is the Gospel. You see the Gospel in the altar. Above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat, and you see the angels, the cherubim, the two rounded cherubim, over here, over our altar, which is a parallel of the Holy of Holies. Then he says, these preparations having thus been made, the priests, they go continually into the outer tent, into this part only, performing their rituals, but into the second, into the second one, only the high priest goes in. Only the high priest goes in, and once a year only, Paul tells us. And what does he take with him? Blood. Blood of the sacrifice. They offer the animal. He takes in the blood, right? And he sprinkles the blood for himself. He offers it for himself and for the errors, the sins of the people. Now, by the way, this is why we hold all the church as a sacred place, but especially the haikal, especially the altar. This is why even the priest, right, should only enter when he has a job to do, right? Obviously, we are imperfect, and we don't follow this the way we should follow it, right? This is why we say, oh, people, don't just walk in. I want to speak with the abuna of illo shaghli. Why can't I go to the altar? Because no one is supposed to be in the altar, right? Even the priest, only when he has to offer the sacrifice. Now, why do we have servers? Because these people are dedicated for this service. And honestly, it is the economy of the church, economia of the church, so that young people might find their vocation of priest, priesthood inside if they see the service how it is doing, right? But it has to be done with reverence and only when needed. This is why we hold such a reverence, because we are keeping what the Bible told us. So Zechariah was inspired to take Mary inside the altar, inside the Holy of Holies, and now, 2,000 years later, we celebrate. Why? Why do we celebrate that? What is the significance of this feast? As always, as always, Everything points to Jesus Christ. It is always about Jesus Christ. Everything points to Christ and everything points to the incarnation. To the coming of Christ to our world. Think about it. Mary entered the temple, but then in the incarnation, she herself became the temple. She, be he saw it al she became the temple. In the mind of the people, the temple is where God dwells. Well, God dwelt in her. She became the holy of holies. He saw it Quds al Aqdas, which the real high priest, the real high priest Christ, only can enter and once only, to resemble her ever virginity. Actually, if you think about it, she contained inside of her 
what the Holy of Holies contained in it. Asaharun, the rod of Aaron, Christ was born of her without seed, without watering, to blossom. Afaradun Nabit. The food, the manna. What does Christ say? He says, I am the manna coming from the sky, from heavens in the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. She contained in her the manna, the real manna, the eternal manna. And the Ten Commandments. He is, the Ten Commandments resemble the old covenant between God and his people. And Christ is the fulfillment of the new covenant between God and his people. She became the Holy of Holies. She is the connection between what is old and what is new. The old blood for the errors of the people and the new blood, his blood, that redeems us. She gave him that blood. With which he redeemed us. He, she gave him that blood, remember. Most importantly, we celebrate this feast or event to remember that she witnessed the presence of God before the incarnation. So when the fullness of the time came, when the time came, she was ready. It was something she experienced. When the angel came to her and told her what's going to happen, she had already foretasted. She lived nine years in God's presence. So she had foretasted that. She had a glance. She had a foretaste. And now with the birth of Christ, this taste will be perfected and completed. It is very interesting. This was not even when Gabriel comes to her, when Gabriel comes in the Annunciation, this was not her first encounter with the angels. So she was ready. Beloved in Christ, finally, what do we learn from this? One thing we learn from this. Let us speak about today and end. Just like Mary had a taste before the incarnation, before the nativity, before Christmas, we too, through fasting, we go to the Holy of Holies, our soul, where the image of God is, to prepare for the Incarnation, just like she prepared for the Incarnation by being in the Holy of Holies. By fasting, we dig deep into our soul and we try to cleanse, to clean up the dirtiness, to find the pure image, we to clean up what's around our soul, the image of God of dirtiness and sins, to find the pure image of God in us by fasting, by praying, and by practicing mercy and love. And by that, through that, we taste the perfect which is to come. The High Priest, God Himself, taking our blood to redeem us with his blood. Amen.